Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are around this beautiful planet of ours. Here it is cold spring day on the Gold Coast. You could essentially call it Melbourne. The weather has been so ridiculous. I hope you're having a better time with the weather, maybe in the Northern Hemisphere leading out of summer. All right, guys, let's dive into today's video. We have a lot to cover. It's the end of the week. We've got the traditional markets to get through, quick look at the metals. And of course, the big headline this week, the stuff that Personally, I haven't seen a lot of people talk about or at least understand the dollar and the huge headlines about the collapse in other currencies and the dollar strengthening. This usually happens at the end of cycles, at the end of the run. And this might also be that time where we get that end of the run on the US dollar. But that doesn't mean that it has to dump from this point. That's what I want to focus on in today's video. So, Make sure you're subscribed with the bell notification icon. This is where we piece together all of the macro content and put it together in a nice, easy, digestible video for you guys. Well, at least I hope that is. So make sure you like the, the video as well if you find it easily digestible along with your uh, morning breakfast or evening meal. All right, let's take a look at S&P week closing. And it has been a week close to the week. 3,500 points is the macro support. We are getting very close to that. We had a close at about 35.84. So our macro 50% for the C19 low to the 2022 top is at 35.05. So essentially 3,500 points. The uh, next support levels are the lows here in September of 2020. So that's 3,200 points. And then the entire 13 year bull market range is at 2,700 points. So we just need to be aware of all of these uh, these numbers on the way down. And the C19 low is at uh, 2,200 points. So it's easy to get carried away with the headlines, especially in such dramatic weeks like we've just seen with the US dollar. And so it's nice to put this into perspective with the major support levels. So huge headlines, world is collapsing, there's an inevitable crash that will take away all of our wealth, et cetera, throw in any headline, you name it, put it down below in the comments. But when you go back to the chart, we, we haven't even touched the macro support, at least just for this, just this range here out of the C19 low. That's where we stand. 3,500 points, good level. 3,200 is right there as well. So let's see what happens for next week. I uh, have been looking at a low coming in and at least being in the low area for now across the stock market and potentially cryptocurrencies as well. This view has not changed. Nothing has shown up in the charts to change that view. And leading forward into the quarter four, the last quarter of 2022, we might be getting that low that we have been anticipating since the beginning of the year. Something that we looked at, especially with that June coming in, I don't expect it to be too much lower on um, the stock markets. Maybe on Bitcoin, we go between that 11, 12, 13K up to 16K. Yes, in a percentage, it's a lot. But remember, it's cryptocurrency. There's a huge upside. You have to expect uh, significant moves to the downside as well. We'll look. We'll get to Bitcoin in a second. But essentially, just from the week close here, uh, the end of week close, it is a week close, but we're still above the significant 50% su um, support level here at 3,500 points. And... This move has still been the biggest upside move. This downside move, so the move that started from August, is still less in price and time than this particular move right here. So this is the move from March top to the June low. If this was to go further than this move, then that might change my mind about things. But we're not there yet. We still got a, a fair bit of time up our sleeves and major support levels as well. So everything's still working into alignment with the uh, view of a low coming in in late 2022. The same sort of deal for the NASDAQ, a week close at the end of the week. It's below the 50% level, but that's happened before in June. Tech is weaker than the rest of the stock market. Uh, that just happens in the second half of the real estate cycle, something that we also look at here and with the members. And I've also got a uh, interview coming up with Phil Anderson as well. If you haven't seen him, go back on my channel and watch those interviews. This is going to be critical for anyone looking to um, get into long-term investing starting this year in 2022. Absolutely critical. And 
won't keep you blindsided with the rest of the crash doomsdayers who are just unsure and waiting to see what happens. You need to be getting in near the lows and timing is everything, not time in the market. I think time in the market, time in the market is very, very possible. And we've shown that here on the channel as well. All right. So for the NASDAQ, possible retest, almost inevitable now. So I got it on here. In, retro in retrospect, it was inevitable. Uh, 10,600 points coming up. That's our 38% from the top to the bottom. And also these lows here. These are the September 2020 lows. This is when the world thought we were about to implode again. So it's important to come back to test that market sentiment level. And we will probably get there. My danger level is below 8,900. But again, this is the tech sector. And I suspect it'll be uh, weaker than the stock market because it's full of the tech stuff that went on a massive, massive boom for the last decade or so. So right now, support, still nothing has really shown anything different here. We've got the 10,600 level, waiting to see how we test that uh, over the coming weeks. The big headline this week was the US dollar. So the Dixie, someone hated me calling it that, but everyone calls it the Dixie. Go figure. The DXY. All right. So the US dollar here, extreme fear called the top or a top. I know I'm going to get a little bit of uh, hate in the comments. It's too early to call this a top yet. I agree because the trend is still up. Plenty of time still um, to the upside uh, you know, could happen because the next major resistance level is about 117, which was the uh, previous levels back in 2000 and 2001 and 2002, and also a major, major 50% level as well. But uh, just going back to the short term, end of week close here for the uh, the Dixie, we have a lower close. And if you want to throw it onto some candles, you can see a solid reversal candle forming here. This is my key reversal. On this one, this is a shooting star candlestick, open, close, low. What makes a shooting star more bearish? It's obviously the lower close and it's not an exact shooting star, but the shooting star does meet some of the criteria and it is showing at least a short-term pullback, especially on the four hour chart as we've started to turn uh, down. So the swing is turning down here. You can see the lower tops and the lower lows forming. Slight support coming in on the previous top, 22nd of September, but overall, this bar right here through this period as the market ran up into the top of uh, 114, that was where the news got extremely bearish on all other currencies and bullish on the dollar. Remember all of those headlines just from a week or so ago, and then it continued into this week as well as we started to climb and just poke our heads above the previous high. If you guys have been following any sort of market for at least 12 months, you can really start to see how the extreme news headlines, and yes, there's been, there's been headlines all the way up, but when it gets to that real extreme point, it is almost on the exact top or very, very near it. So you, if you were actually trading it, you wouldn't care if you got out here or here. It's so close to the top anyway, but those that extreme news headline basically came in at the peak. And the same deal goes for the Great British Pound, this is the weekly close here. This is like a lesson that we can learn for crypto going through those news headlines and uh, how much the news and social media guys who have are basically tailored towards uh, accommodating the mindset of retail investors. And yes, a lot of that is out there because that is what gets the clicks. We try to avoid that, or at least if we do get the clicks, show what is actually going on based on the data in the charts. Again, the reversal on the Great British Pound here, that was where all the extreme news was coming in. There are a lot of problems that we've seen from the news in Great Britain, especially with their retirement funds. They needed to um, pay out a whole lot of money uh, in the last what week or two, and they're sort of working on those programs as well. So there's a lot of fundamentals that are going on here, but we just got a reversal at that exact time when the news was the most bearish that we have seen in a very long time. It happens so often, it is uncanny. So make sure you keep that in part of your trading and investing portfolios and just learn more about it. It almost always happens at those exact um, extreme times. And even if we get another low come in, it has it has put in a reversal for now. This is a clear reversal pattern. Uh, the market pushed down, broke some lows, and then the, uh, the close of the week was very high. It was higher than the previous week. 
and it had a very, very big move on a week which should have been very weak. So just looking at the, the measure from the low to the top, that's an 8% move on a currency from that low to the top and to the close with 7.7 .7 from the low. Now, what does all this mean with the dollar? How can we use this for our own trading and investing? I always like to have something practical when it comes to just looking at the charts. Well, this could be the top or at least around the top. And note that the top could go on for many, many months, but it's not going to make that much difference in terms of the price, just based on the data on the charts here. Sure, it could boost up to 117 or even these tops here at 120, but going from 112 or at least the top of 114, it's not that much more uh, in terms of a percentage move. But the news headlines will probably still be extreme. That's just what we expect from, from headlines and titles on YouTube, potentially like this video here. So in terms of the top, the last two times going back 22 years, 15 bars, this is on a monthly chart. So this is essentially 15 months, call it a year, year and a half, from one top to the next top before the market crashed. That's a very significant crash. Then I'm looking at this top here. This market was a very, very quick run up, similar to what we're currently seeing now. Again, the trend hasn't turned down, so it's not a confirmed downtrend. However, we can see that in the past, after a lot of uh, a quick move up, you know, a big move here, and the market lasted for 22 months, almost two years, top to top before it crashed. All right, so uh, this is basically what I'm expecting over this year, 2022, potentially into 2024. Maybe the dollar stays up at these levels before we start to see a move down. Maybe it happens sooner, but what we've seen over the last 22 years after a significant run up is that it tends to hang around at these tops uh, before making its correction or crash all the way down. And that is what is meant by the warning here, the timeframes. This is due to expire. The headlines are coming out. The market is getting extremely fearful on some end and the time eventually has to run out to the upside, you know, for the, the bullishness on the USD and then the bearishness for the rest of the currencies. Now for Bitcoin, end of week close, we had a slightly higher close, still have not taken out the targets to the upside. Remember, this is the futures contract, so it just opens on Monday, closes on Friday afternoon does not trade on the weekend, but we do have our um, uh, Bitcoin chart here that does trade on the weekend to have a look at. Keep in mind that the market tends to come back to those levels over the weekend. If we do make a move, it might come close to where the market closed, all right? So it could be some trading over this weekend, but uh, just keep in mind where when the Bitcoin futures market opens, which is essentially for the US guys on Sunday night and for us Monday morning, uh, just have a look at where that price might be because you might get a quick move to fill the gap back to where the market had closed, all right? So the targets here to the upside, 20,500. You know, my level is 20,700, essentially these lows back here. Uh, anything beneath this is just a bit of movement for the market. Target two, 21,700, which is the 50% level top to bottom. And then overall, the big one I want to see taken out is 23,000. 200. All right. So that's the Wyckoff bullish flip. We got a little bit of an upside. So I guess over the weekend, we might see a bit of a grind up, but we're still very heavily, well, we're still underneath the bear market downtrend, but we're getting very close. We're basically buying our time. And while the dollar was going on that run, Bitcoin has been chilling out. It has been chilling at these lower prices, but not making any significant moves down unlike other commodities. So there is some sort of strength here, a bit of a divergence between Bitcoin and the other commodities. So this could then lead to a little bit of a break or potential good break above the bear market downtrend to at least get us into that short-term bullish move. And for Bitcoin on the Coinbase chart, just to give us a bit of a reading on the four-hour chart, uh, same sort of prices that we're looking at here, getting close to that bear market downtrend. We have hit that market, uh, that bear market downtrend, this will be our fifth time now, a few at the top, uh, one further down here with that fake out on the 13th. And just over the last 12 hours, we had another hit directly on it, but the lows are getting higher on the short term. So if there's any time for Bitcoin to break that bear market downtrend, this has got to be it. If we just go sideways here, maybe next week we finally get that first little break above, but we need to wait for the confirmation and those closes above those levels. So any sort of move above, I want to see it at least close above 
around these uh, levels here, the 50% of 21.5K, ideally above that 23K, if we can get those closes above that level. Otherwise, I think we've got another good well, fake out test above that bear market downtrend, which we have not been able to break the entire move down. But we are getting very close to the end of this thing. And these will just be those swing traps that catch the market by surprise uh, because the volatility has basically dropped off. And when that happens, we do get those moves up and down to test the supply to the upside, come back and test the demand to the downside. Overall for the weekend on cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, be aware of any sort of traps. We still do not have a clear trend for Bitcoin and cryptos. The dollar starting to turn at this point. It's not 100% confirmed, but the shorter term timeframes are confirmed. Uh, for the traditional markets, we are waiting to see whether they can form some support at those macro levels. So things are coming to an end, obviously from the analysis that we have here on the channel. It's a new month, so stay tuned to the channel for the Bitcoin October price prediction video. Subscribe, like, bell notification icon, all those good things down below. Top of the video description, there is the free newsletter and of course, Bybit, Mexi and BitGet for thousands of dollars of sign up bonuses. Check them out down below. Guys, have a great weekend. If you're watching the F1, who is going to win? Drop your thoughts in the comment down below. I'm going for Verstappen to take out the title until we meet again at the next video. Have a good one. Peace out.